<laughs> Hello up there. I'm much lower today because I'm sitting in a chair. This coding challenge requires a chair. It's actually just me that needs the chair today. Okay. I feel so organized. I feel like I need papers, like I'm a newscaster or something. Welcome to the Coding Train Coding Challenge. Today, I'm going to make Logo. What do you mean you're gonna make Logo? So Logo is an educational programming language designed in 1967 by all these people listed here. And you can go read the Wikipedia page to learn more about the history. I actually did learn to program a bit in Logo in my youth. Maybe some of you did. So what I mean by making Logo, I wanna create a interpreter I want, to, I want to create a programming environment in the browser that basically does logo. So I, as the, ooh, it's like spell checking me here. How weird. Um, I can write logo commands and then watch my logo commands be executed in this canvas. And probably what I should do is have a button that's like a run button, but maybe I could be continuously interpreting it. Who knows? So what are the logo commands? So the idea of logo is turtle graphics. The idea is that you're controlling a turtle to move around the screen. The turtle move can, and the turtle can do a number of things. And I found this tutorial from uh, a Brown University to, uh, a course. Uh, you can find the link up here. And these are the these are the drawn commands. I can move forward by a certain amount. I can go backwards by a certain amount. I can turn right. I can turn left by some angle, and I can clear screen. Um, there are also other commands, and uh, there's like a repeat command, and there's pen up, pen down. It's very strange to be sitting here. A uh, hide turtle, show turtle, home, label, set X, Y. So many possibilities. I'm not going to implement everything because I got to go home at some point. But I'm going to do some. I'm going to release this code, and you, the viewer, will probably make your own magical logo interpreter. Maybe you don't even want to make a logo interpreter, but just this idea of drawing in this way. Um, will inspire you to do something. So, and what would be interesting is that could I make a logo interpreter that then I paste something in here that would actually generate this particular pattern, this example logo output. So that's kind of like a bit of a challenge. Certainly I would need a repeat to be able to do that. And this video will be uh, approximately seven and a half hours long. Are you ready? Let's go. Uh, all right, so the first thing that I wanna do, huh, what do I wanna do? I guess I need to parse this. So, okay, what, did I, what do I have already? So I have already an HTML page that has a text area in it. And that text area has this sort of like logo uh, code written in there. Um, so what I can do, and I'm using the P5.js library, uh, and what I can do is I can say, um, I'm gonna make a, uh, something called editor. I'm gonna say editor equals select uh, code. And then I'm gonna say console.log editor.value. We we'll call the value function. Was that what it's gonna be? Let's see. Whoops. <laughs> Refresh. There we go. Okay, so that's how I get the code. So I could say a let uh, code equals uh, editor.value. Then what do I need to do? I need to parse this. And looks to me like I can quite easily parse this with a space. So I can really nicely, I can do say something like let tokens. Tokens is a sort of word that's often used in computational things to describe a single unit, a token of text, a word token, a sentence token, a character token. Because what I want to do is say split. And at the most simplest level, I just want to split that text up by, um, by spaces. And I can do all sorts of fancy stuff in here, like use a regular expression and split it in fancier ways, and I'm gonna need error handling. I'm not gonna worry about any of that. I am just going to go ahead and say, look at this. All right, look at this. Ah, lovely, lovely. Look, this is weird extra uh, carriage return thing, but I'm not gonna worry about that. We can see now I have something. It splits up everything into an element of an array. And actually I'm getting a nice uh, suggestion from the chat that if I call console.table, might, I might be able to see it in a nice other way. Like, oh, that's really nice. Look at that, console.table. It's like my favorite thing ever. Um, okay, so there we go. So we can see there's the array now. All right, so what do I wanna do? Oh, I have like a crazy idea. Let's build a dictionary. What do I mean by a dictionary? Let's make a JavaScript object where each one of these, uh, each one of these commands is a function, is, is, is mapped, each one of these keys, the command is mapped to a function. What, 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 what am I talking about? Let me show you with code. So let's, um, let's actually make a, uh, a, another JavaScript file called turtle.js. 
And normally I would make like a turtle graphics, a turtle object, which would really make sense. I want one. Actually, let's do that. Let's make a turtle object, because the turtle is going to need, the turtle is the thing that's moving and drawing. So the turtle is going to uh, have an x value. Maybe it'll be initialized somewhere. Uh, the turtle will have a y value, and that's good right now. And the turtle might have functions like, you know, forward, backward, backward, string. I have to because this idea that I had was to then also have an object like um, commands equal, and then uh, like forward would be a key mapped to a particular function. And in that function, we would, uh, 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 you know, translate by some amount, by, uh, you know, some length or something. Maybe I'm always going to move forward along the x-axis. I'll have to be root, right? I could, I could do that. So I was thinking about doing this, but it kind of makes sense to have an object. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, right. It definitely needs a direction. This is very important. Like, I might call it angle. Like it needs a direction. I don't know if it makes sense to call it direction or angle. Maybe the direction, but it's, e it's initialized as an angle. But I kind of, so I'm going to do this right now. Um, and this, by the way, would be, what was the actual command? It's FD for forward. So I'm going to uh, put this away for a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let turtle. And uh, I'm going to make a turtle. <laughs> That's what I'm doing in my life, making turtles. A uh, new turtle, and it's going to start in the middle of the window uh, with um, an angle of zero. So this is going to be the initial turtle. And then let's think, so let's forget about the fact that I have to follow the logo commands. And let's just for a second actually program the things I would do. So if I'm going to go forward by some amount, I'm going to say translate by that amount. Uh, I'm gonna, everything's going to be like along the x-axis. If I'm going to go backward, watch this. I could say forward by negative amount. This dot forward. Ooh, whoa! Visual Studio Code just corrected that for me. Let me try that again. Forward. Ha! -ha! That's scary. Like, it's like how Gmail writes your email for you now. <laughs> this dot forward, negative amount, right? So backward is moving forward by a negative amount. What were some of the other commands? Uh, where were they? Uh, right. So right would be, uh, I'm going to say right. Oh, by the way, so I actually, when I read the command, I don't need to have forward and backward because I'm just going to use my forward command. So uh, anyway, we'll see. But like right uh, would be, um, by some angle, I would say uh, rotate. Uh, no, don't autocorrect for me by that some angle. So that's what I'm going to do. I could. So I'm probably going to use the fact that P5 has this whole uh, transformation matrix thing, and I have some video tutorials about that. Push, pop, translate, rotate, so I can actually control the turtle that way. I could do all that math with trigonometry, but I'm going to stick with that. Um, <laughs> and everyone's telling me that like, like that this dot thing, this dot, this dot, this dot. Um, has been around for quite a while in, uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, <clears throat> never forget that this dot, now I won't be able to forget, but I want to forget it. Like what if I did this? Ah, wait, can I never, uh, am I never going to forget again? Like what if I did something weird like this? It doesn't change it. It did it with functions. It didn't know to change my instance variable. Okay. All right, so let's stick with this for a second. And I am going to also, I need to know whether if, so ah, the turtle is going to need a pen state. So let's make a variable called pen that's true when the pen is drawing and false when the pen is not drawing. So I would say if, and then, ooh, oh, I don't need the x, y. So do I need, I need the starting point. So the starting point would actually just be translate to that x, y. And uh, interestingly enough, I don't necessarily need to keep track of these things. Let's think about that. I might. <laughs> and then rotate by that angle. So when I create it, I'm actually just like translating and rotating. 
then forward if this dot pen, I want to say line <laughs> by the, some amount oh, from 0, 0 to the amount comma 0. Like I want to draw a line. I'm considering the x-axis to be the kind of universal axis. I'm going to rotate from there. It might make sense for it to be the y-axis, to be honest, because you might think of it starting going up. But whatever, I can always change that. I'm going to draw that line. Uh, and actually, so I want to draw the line first and then translate to the end of the line. That's what I want to do. And rotate is just rotate. Okay. So if I have forward and right, I don't think that I need backward. What I'm going to do now in here is I'm going to say for uh, every token in tokens, uh, let... Um, oh, no, I have that already. Uh, let's do this in the, like a ridiculous way for a second. If token equals forward, then um, amount equals, oh, no, I should use an, inter, I should use a, um, an index here. Let I, I because I, I'm going to want to look at the next one. I is less than tokens.length, I plus plus. You know what? I'm going to be even crazier. And I'm going to say uh, index equals zero. While index is less than tokens.length, I'm going to manually kind of iterate over this thing. And I'm going to say uh, let token equal tokens index. Then I'm going to say if token equals forward. And I, I, I want to think of like a different way of organizing this code for sure. <laughs> Switch statement, I know you're all thinking. If token equals forward, then amount should be tokens index plus one. And then I could say turtle forward amount. Right? So what's in the actual instructions? Forward, right, forward, right. Oh, this is good. Only forward and right. That's perfect. Else, if token equals right, then let angle equal also the next one, and then turtle right, did I say, is it right? I mean, maybe I should make this turn, whatever, right by the angle. Oh, and I should say um, angle mode degrees because the, uh, the angle is being given in degrees, not in radians. If that's not a familiar concept to you, I refer you to some other video that I have about radians and angles. Okay. Um, so now, um, okay, so now, yeah, so people in the chat are telling me I can say index plus plus. So why can I say that? Let me show you why. So let's say I have a variable like i equals zero. Well, we know that i plus plus is the same as saying i equals i plus one. So i plus plus, but it also returns that value. So it resets the value and returns it. It actually allows me to move forward. So I was going to lazily just say at the end, i plus equal two, but it would make sense for me to actually say index, and uh, index, not i, index plus plus in here, which is like go to the next one and uh, use the value of the next one all at the same time, and then afterwards I could go one more because I need to go to the next one. Okay, because not everything will be in a pair, we'll see. All right, so let's look at that, and I'm going to hit refresh, and I have an error somewhere. Oh, too, too many curly brackets. I'm going to put this here, and here we go. Oops, nope, refresh. Ah, tokens is not defined. Code.split, why is tokens not defined? Where is tokens not defined? Sketch.js line six. Oh, because I, I was console logging it. I don't need to console log it anymore, but let's leave that in there. Turtle is not defined. Oh, okay, so of course I need to also here reference and add my other JavaScript script, which has turtle.js. Okay, ready? I don't see anything. <laughs> so one thing I have to think about here is, hmm, uh, let's set up a stroke of, pff, I got to really deal, someone's going to help me figure out how to turn off this autocomplete that I don't want in Visual Studio Code. <laughs> I think someone already did tell me this and I forgot to look at it. I think it was Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. 
Um, oh, and there's plus plus index and index plus plus, which is someone, someone from the chat is making. Maybe I'll come back and talk about that in a second. All right, uh, stroke 255. Uh, let's just add stroke weight one. Just we actually we don't need to add that. That's fine. Actually, let's make it a little thicker just so it's easier to see. Stroke weight uh, two. Oh uh, yeah, let's see. Hmm. So why am I not seeing anything? So let's console log some stuff. A little debugging here. Uh, console dot log token uh, and console dot log forward. Let's see if that happens. Okay. Forward, forward, ooh, yeah, forward, forward, right, forward, forward. So it is getting forward. Uh, let's look at, oh, you know what? This is a string. Turtle.forward amount is going to have pos trouble understanding that. I wonder if I should have this. Um, so I, um, I should probably convert, um, I could do something like this, convert it to a number or like parse int might be good. Let's do parse int. That might be a little more universal. So uh, let's add that. Um, I was thinking that might be the problem. Let's console log amount. Ooh, not a number. All right, hold on, everybody. Something is terribly wrong. Oh! <laughs> so it's actually, ooh, thank you. Breaking news from the chat. <laughs> um, I actually have to use the plus plus index here. This is why I didn't want to use that. So the chat is going crazy over this mistake. Listen to the chat, please. I'm sitting in a chair. It's hard for me to see the chat. <laughs> OK. I, just, I don't use these things. I like to be long-winded in how I code. So let's go back to here. Ah, oh, so sad. Let's, let's look here at, uh, right, i equals 0. Console log i plus plus. That gives me 0. Right, because even though i is now 1, I++ plus plus returns the original value of I. There we go. So that's actually not giving me the correct thing. But plus plus I actually returns, now I'm getting 2, because it already went on to the next one. So this increases the value of I and gives you back that new value. So th I see this in shorthand all the time. It's kind of like a ternary thing that I'm finally getting myself to use. So this actually needs to be this. Plus plus index. Maybe the ch I plus plus, so Gab Gabriel in the chat is saying I plus plus increments and returns the previous number, plus plus I increments and returns the next number. That's a nice, succinct way of saying it. All right, so here we go. So forward 60, 60, so now things are looking up. The turtle is printing out the right uh, amount. Um, so let's console log the amount here. Um, and let's give this a try. All right, so um, I don't need to console log the token. There's too many console logs here. 63 times. How come I didn't see, I don't see a line. Uh, look, at the, <laughs> look at the chat. <laughs> I don't want to look at the chat. That's the thing. I like to figure these things out myself. How come I don't see a line? Um, so turtle forward amount. When I created the turtle, I made it in the middle. Oh, you know what's a little bit weird here is, um, so this is, this is not so good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little suspicious that translate and stuff is not going to work the way I want in setup. I need to move on to the draw loop. Like, for example, if I say translate 100, 100, and then ellipse 400, uh, 0, 0, 200, 200. Let's just run this for a second. Why am I not drawing anything? Oh, draw background zero! Ah! This whole thing I'm calling background. I can see the chat actually saying that now. <laughs> I've been calling background this whole time. What a terrible problem. Okay, let's go back and see if my logic now is sound. My brain operates more slowly when sitting, apparently. Okay, let's try this. All right, weird. I don't know what just happened there. Oh, background zero. Let's draw the background zero here. There we go! Look at that! Turtle graphics! Um, now, I kind of feel like forward 60 should probably start pointing up. Does anybody know how logo actually works? Turning right, it definitely turned the right direction. Like left would be the other way. I don't know that this matters so much. I'll leave it like this. Okay. 
So, all right, we're kind of good. I've got to deal with other commands. Anyone have an idea? I would love to take an idea about um, how to, I mean, I could use a switch statement, but I kind of like the idea of a lookup table. What if what I did is I had, took this idea, I want to try this idea of my commands. I have an idea. Oh, this will work. If, oh, I have a totally have a crazy idea. So forward is a function, a turtle dot forward. I have to figure out how to do the argument. Uh, then backward is the same thing, but maybe it calls it with, so can I give it, how do I give this an argument? Because I want it to self-execute. I have to think about this. Somebody, somebody think about this. I can bind it with something. What's, is, this a, is this a sound strategy? Uh, write is then a function that calls turtle.write. In other words, what I want to do is say, oh, but I still, uh, I want to say, um, uh, I want to say basically, Commands, token, execute. Oh yeah, I can give it an argument. Oh, of course. Uh, tokens plus plus index. Look at this. So this should do exactly what I was doing, right? The token is forward. Execute the function with that command with the argument. Yeah. So I don't need an if statement here. All I need is this, right? Because now it's going to, and so the argument goes here. The argument for backward goes here, and I just do negative amount. Then right is the angle. Turn right the angle. And then this is, I don't know if this is a sound solution, but I kind, I'm intrigued by it. Left is turn right, but by negative the angle. OK, so this should work. This is a little bit nuts looking, but let me unpack this for you. If I had a function, right, if I had a function that's you know, forward with an amount, this is actually what this is doing because I have uh, this resolves itself to this number that's the argument after the command and this resolves itself to a function that's defined up here that I'm calling. Um, so I think this is going to work. Let's try this. And for some reason I feel like having this in a separate, I feel like having this in here. Let me zoom back out. Like this just makes more sense to me to have this with the turtle class because they kind of go together. Okay. No, commands token is not a function. Why not? Console log token. Console log uh, commands. Let me just see what's going on here. So, this, oh no, I just got to the end. So it got to the end because there was an invalid token there. So, uh, so first thing I need to do is make sure if commands token even exists. So I want to make sure it exists. And if not, I want to skip it. So this is a little bit of, you know, kind of pathetic error handling, but it should work. And now I can say, ooh, look at that. We've got turtle graphics, right? I could add another, you know, left, uh, left 60, forward 50. Oh, I don't have any way. Oh, I'm not. So I need to real time interpret. Let's real time interpret this. What do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is um, I've already did. I didn't really explain these pieces. I just realized at the beginning. So I made a text area. I think I did actually <laughs> with an ID and then I used the P5 DOM library. Okay, I did explain this. All right. So but what I can do is I can attach an event and the event that I want to attach is editor input and then, um, and then uh, basically I want to say like go turtle. So anytime I make any change, and, and actually maybe I want to, let's start with changed. Let's just start with changed. So changed is an event that, that like only executes when you finished a task, like you hit enter or you tab out of a, a thing. So, and now I can take all of this and this is my function go turtle. And again, I'm kind of, 
Not really using a more modern ES6 JavaScript here, but I think that's fine. So now I have go turtle. It should execute whenever I change anything in the editor. So let's delete all this and tab out of it. Ah, code.split is not a function. Why not? Oh, I've got to get the new stuff from the editor. And you know, I could select it. And I know it's a little silly to have this global variable, but whatever, it's fine. Okay, refresh. If I do this, tab out, I got this. Now I can say, you know, write 100. But I want it to live interpret. Why not, right? It should be, I should be able to write enough error handling that it can like interpret the code live. So I'm going to change this to input. And you'll see like when I, oh, if I hit, hit space, right? Oh, but I also <laughs> need to redraw the background. Ooh, this is fun. Okay, so now I can start deleting stuff. Weird. Oh, and guess what? Another thing I need to do. I need to say push and uh, push and pop because I don't want it to pick up from where it last left off. I always want it to start from the beginning. <laughs> okay, I, I can see all the comments of people helping me fix my Visual Studio, Studio code. Okay, now this should, so first of all, I want it to run once at the beginning. So I also need to call go turtle at least once. All right, and now if I start deleting, look at that. It's actually real time interpreting. So I could say forward uh, 500, 10, left, uh, one, left 90, forward 100. Look at that. Oh, I love this. It's like real time interpreting. We're kind of, dare I say, somewhat done with this coding challenge. But we can't stop here, right? I mean, Everybody tells me, don't make a video on YouTube that's longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> this one is going to be as long as it is. Because I want to be able to do this. And I think there's a lot more to implement. Like, I should implement pen up and pen down. That would be a pretty easy one to do. Let's do that. Let's implement that, just to show you. But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, maybe we'll make this a community project. Um, I will release the code as is the finished version of this coding challenge on GitHub, the Coding Train website, but I will also make a new repository, look in the video's link for, um, for a version that people could contribute to. So if I do, what is pen up and pen down? PU, <laughs> I'm so immature. PU uh, function uh, would be turtle.pen equals true, right? And then PD would be a function that is turtle.pen equals false. So I should be able to use those now, right? So for example, if I just uh, refresh my code here, if I say right here, pen up, it should, okay, so something didn't work. Let's think about this. Uh, turtle pen equals true. Oh, it still moves, but it doesn't draw the line. That's right. Um, so let's look at this again. It shouldn't move on, it should just move on by one index. I guess we're gonna have to console log here. Let's be, let's debug this. Forward 60, let's do forward 40, right 90, pen up, forward 100, right 90, forward 50. Huh, so what happened? Uh, when it's up, you won't write, which is I don't want it to, but I want it to still move forward. Like it still should translate. Let's, let's console log, what am I console logging? This amount, and where did, how did it get in there with not a number? That's weird. Um, I don't want it to ever do that. So let's look at, let's make sure Let's come back and console log. This is a, it's going to be a little debugging here going on. Uh, the chat will probably tell me what's wrong, but um, I'm going to say console. And, and let me just actually, um, here now, let me just change this to something that I want to test. Uh, right 90, forward 50, right 90, pen up. Forward 50, right 90, pen, uh, oh, I need to do pen down. That's why, maybe it's working. I never did pen down. <laughs> Let's see, pen down, forward 50. Maybe it actually worked. Okay, 
forward 50, right 90, forward 50, right 90, pen up, forward 50, right 90, pen. No, I should see a line here. I should see a last line there. It expects a number. It shouldn't, oh. Oh, because it's actually, oh, interesting. It's doing this for every command. So it only should do this if commands token. Uh, so how do I, of course. So it needs to know not to do this. So I could, um, hmm. Yeah, it, don't increment the token index again. Yeah, but I, I'm trying to do this within a like elegant way without an if statement. <laughs> like, right? Like somehow I want to like return something to tell it not to go up, but I already going up to get the angle. So I mean I could, like certainly I could say if commands, right? I mean I could do something like if token, um, so what's a, like starts with P, like, index of p <laughs> equals zero, right? That's a quick way to see, oh, car at, this is more, this makes more, car at zero equals, as long as token, right, if token car at zero equals p, someone's gonna suggest a better way to do this. But let's just get this working right now. Then, uh, commands, uh, token, woo, just execute it without any arguments. Else, execute it with uh, this and go up by one. So this should do the trick, right, based on what the token is. Um, uh, yeah, I want to like return the amount, but I feel like I got to think about this more. Let's just get, let's just make this work. <laughs> let's make this work. Uh, uh, sketch 32. Uh, okay, so I have, I'm out of, I'm incorrect in my like land of brackets. If there is an actual command, if, oh no, if it equals p, by the way, this should be if it equals p, if token car at zero equals p, then just execute the command with no argument, otherwise execute commands with the next argument. What's wrong here? I guess I'm just missing another curly bracket somehow. There we, ugh. Forward, okay, let's see what Forward 50, right 90 for, uh, what happened here? Pop was called without matching. Oh, whoa, the pop has to be out here. <laughs> okay, there we go, uh, right? Forward 50, right 90. Forward 50, right 90. Pen up, didn't go forward 50. Pen up, which should make the pen be false, and then it should go then Forward, still, remove the not. Yeah, I already got that part. The chat's behind me. Um, and then, oh yes, a better way would be to have, um, Nathan in the chat, so the better way would be to have additional methods in the commands object tell it how many arguments to take. But hold on, I'm gonna like debug, why is this not working? I mixed up pen down and pen up, that's why. <laughs> Thank you very much, is that really why? Pen up, oh yeah. <laughs> Pen down. There we go. Oh, I'm there. Yay! <laughs> Look at the chat going crazy. <laughs> I inverted pen up and pen down. All right, but this is exciting because I can change this to pen down. Ooh, wait, it froze. Do I have some sort of bad infinite loop here? Hold on, I have a problem. Oh, this has to, this, I always need to go up by the next index. Bad infinite loop problem. This was a big problem. My index plus plus, I need to always go to the next one. So I'm gonna have to, uh, this, this, this page is frozen. I'm gonna have to kill it somehow. And there we go. Okay, so now I should be able to change things around again. Oh, no, it's still? Oh, because it didn't, <laughs> it was cached. <laughs> because I didn't have the console open. Can I get it back? No, try again. You know what I'm just gonna do is kill the server. <sighs> Let's kill the server. I've got a little uh, local server running with HTTP server. Let's see if that manages to get, get me back here. Um, and let me open up the console. And this, I should be good now. Okay. Yeah, all right, I'm back. Pen down, right? We can, we can make up whatever we want. Forward, 
100, forward 10, right 10, forward 10, uh, left, left 90, uh, pen up, forward, ooh. What just happened? Something happened. Something broke. Uh, background. Ooh. What's this? Background should be here. Hmm, let's try this again. Why did things break just there? <laughs> what bugs do I have? Stroke zero on pen up. Oh, that's an interesting idea. That's, I love that idea. That's a really good idea. Maybe I won't do that right now because people might want to play with color in a different way. Um, but why did it break? Forward, okay. Forward 10, right 90, forward 20, right 90, pen up. Why does that kill it? And then it doesn't come back. You rerun the input. I need, ah! CJ, Coding Garden with CJ. Shout out to watch the Coding Garden with CJ. Thank you, CJ, for this. I, I sort of forgot that the turtle's not, this is right here, every, this is the sort of reinitializing everything. Like background reinitializes everything. The pop here undoes what it does. So in a way, the transformations are initialized again. And then I get the, the code from the editor from scratch, but I didn't reset the turtle. So I should really have a function that says like turtle reset. I mean, there's a lot of different ways I could do this, but let's actually do that. So let's, um, let's actually keep all these things, put this in a function called reset, uh, and say this dot x, this dot y, this dot angle, and watch this, we're gonna watch the magic <laughs> of Visual Studio Code to type my this dot in for me. Okay, so now that should fix that problem. Uh, X is not defined because I, I forgot. Oh, wait. Hmm. Where's that? X is not defined in turtle.js line 30. Huh? This dot dr, not ir, not this dot angle. There we go. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the chat. It's this variable, this dot direction, dir. Okay. I didn't seem to fix anything. Um, here, <laughs> I'm just messing around. Okay, well let's hold on. Let's let's be. Uh, so let's actually do some debugging here. Console dot log. This dot x. This dot y. This dot dir. Let's look at those things. 100, 100, 0. All right, that's good. Why did I see that twice just now? Oh, because when I initialized the turtle, that's fine though. So I actually don't need to call this dot reset here. Whoops. If I'm doing it, oh, there we go. Good, now, it's not, do oh, it is doing the right thing. So now I should be able to just start deleting stuff. This is gonna freak it out. Like, so I'm not doing total error checking, but now I can say forward 100, there we go. Forward 10, right 90, uh, forward 50, uh, left uh, 90, uh, pen up, forward 10, uh, left 90, forward 100. Mm, all right, so what did I, <laughs> I broke it. Uh, so is this invalid? Forward 10, hi over there, you're watching me, I'm, I'm still here with you. Uh, right 90, forward 50. Left 90, <laughs> left 90 would be go this way, pen up, Forward 10, left 90. Oh, I didn't do pen down. <laughs> pen down. There we go. It's working. Okay, so this works. Now I could put in any kind of commands that I want and get the result of the turtle graphics drawing. But I really, really want to see this pattern. And I could do some kind of crazy thing to generate the text that does this pattern, that would be kind of a fun thing to do, a little challenge for you watching, um, to actually generate the text which would be very long to then render that. But what would be better would be to actually implement this repeat command. And so what the repeat command does, it basically says, repeat has an argument three, and then it looks for the commands that are within these square brackets and does those commands three times. So I'm gonna have to completely rethink 
the way that I split the text up. Just splitting it by like spaces is no good. In fact, I'm probably going to want to like parse the text as I go. I could maybe do some kind of recursion or like a regular expression. So this is my challenge to you. Implement the repeat command. I will come back in a future coding challenge and do it <laughs> based on the way you did it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that as part of this challenge. So right now, this is wrapping up. Uh, look in this video's description to links to the code exactly the way that I left it, as well as perhaps a community project where I will accept pull requests to add, you know, keeping it simple, add some features and, and, and other commands that are part of Turtle Graphics. Also, you know, like a grammar, some type of like thinking about like a grammar might be a way. It's just like we're really in the weeds of how like compilers and things work in a way. We're interpreting in real time somebody else's code and executing it. Wow, this is fun. It does need a train. So instead of a turtle, it could have a train or you could make a train, a turtle or a train. I don't know anymore. I'm going to go. Thank you for watching this coding challenge where I implemented part of the original logo programming language, and stay tuned for part two where I finish this off at least with the repeat command so we can generate some more interesting patterns. And I look forward to your, uh, your own versions of this. Please share them with me on Twitter, on the codingtrain.com website, and in the comments here, okay? Thank you, goodbye.